All right, time for today's injury report brought to you by Kate Regional Health System. Dr. Kevin McHale, Penn Orthopedics, Kate Regional Health System, the best of both worlds for a healthier life. For an appointment, 609-463-KATE or visit kateregional.com slash orthopedics. You know, last few people uh, were big fans of the doc. They're tweeting at us about how much they enjoy yeah. hearing his breakdowns of these injuries. But unfortunately, we were talking too many Eagles injuries last week, doc. Uh, and he appears via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. Welcome back. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. Much rather be talking about the Giants injuries and the Eagles, but uh, we still have some more Eagles to discuss, unfortunately. Well, actually, we do have a Giant on the list this week, a pretty big Giant, so we'll get to that. But first, let's start with the Eagles. As defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz said that the team will be without starting quarterback Ronald Darby for a little while. He recovers from a hamstring strain, and, you know, there's all these different hamstring problems, issues, things. Uh, when you hear a guy about a month, do red flags kind of go up that this could be, a, you know, longer than that? I mean, when you hear hamstring strain in a month? Yeah, absolutely. So hamstring strains, as we know, there's a, such a wide spectrum. The mild strains may only require a week or two uh, before the player's back out in the field. But when you hear a month, you're thinking that it's clearly a much more significant strain and it could definitely be longer. Uh, unfortunately for Darby, he might be one of these other casualties of recovering from an ACL like he had last year. Got back to playing, maybe not at the peak level of uh, fitness that he usually has at the beginning of the season, and now all of a sudden he's straining his hamstring because he's not he's at a higher risk of re-injury. Uh, unfortunately, we saw the same thing with Darren Sproles last year, and he was out for a very prolonged period of time. We're hoping that's definitely not the case for Ronald Darby, and hopefully we do see him in just a few weeks. But unfortunately, when you hear the month uh, timeline, you're definitely concerned for a much more significant injury. Yeah, that's uh, a big one there in the secondary. They'll be without him. Let's talk about the Giants because this one is a big one. Adam Schefter reporting Saquon Barkley, four to eight weeks, high ankle sprain. Now, something I saw recommended a option of tightrope surgery. Now, I've never heard of this before. Um, so, uh, you know, normally when I hear high ankle sprain, I, I, you don't really hear surgery all that much. So what are we getting from that information? Sure. So, first of all, the high ankle sprain is a lot different than your typical low ankle sprain where you roll your ankle and injure those ligaments on the outside of the ankle. The high ankle sprain is when that foot is forced away from the body and actually stretches the ligaments that connect your two lower leg bones, your tibia and your fibula. So when you have a high ankle sprain, it's notorious for taking you know, three to three times longer than a typical low ankle sprain to heal. And one option, uh, when, they, when a player has instability, when you actually stress it on x-ray and that those bones gap apart, is to fix it with a surgery. Uh, the conventional way to fix it was actually to drill a screw across the two bones to connect it. It gives you rigid fixation, holds those bones in place while the ligaments heal. The problem is with a football player, as they're getting back out to play, you got to take that screw out of there. Otherwise, it can break and be a source of pain. So the newer procedure is a tightrope, and it's a great option for elite athletes. Uh, instead of a screw going across connecting the tibia and the fibula, it's a special kind of uh, suture that has buttons either end that you can tighten and tension and keep that supported while the ligaments heal. Uh, the benefit of it is you don't have to take that device out. It can stay in there. It continues to offer support while the player is playing. And, uh, and it's not like a screw that's going to break and cause pain when they're, when they're out there. So it is an option. Most of these high ankle sprains do heal fine without surgery. It does take longer than a low ankle sprain. It's completely reasonable to treat it non-operatively. But it's a great option for those that either uh, have significant instability and need the surgery right away or tr get treated non-operatively and keep having pain kind of like Brandon Graham after the Super Bowl where they have an all-season procedure to give them that extra support to allow it to heal. All right, real quick, last one. Phillies are in action, but they're not with JT Real Muto because he's having surgery to clean up a meniscus in his right knee. It doesn't sound like a tear, so this seems like uh, he shouldn't have any problems catching down the road. Yeah, so when you hear that little cleanup procedure, it means it's likely a, a small tear in the meniscus, a little injury to that shock-absorbing meniscus in your knee. Um, if it's a bigger tear that needs a repair, it gets sewn together, it's a much bigger recovery. Uh, but when there's that smaller tear, you just kind of have to trim out that torn little fragment that gets stuck between the bones, causing pain. The good news is it won't affect his performance in the short term, and he'll definitely be more than ready by spring training. He'd be even ready for the postseason if the Phillies were forced oh, wow. to have one. Um, but unfortunately, he's going to be done uh, for uh, this, the rest of the season for the Phillies, and it shouldn't affect them next year. The only question is going to be how much of it has to get removed and how much of a higher risk of arthritis down the line he's going to have uh, that could affect his overall career uh, longevity and things like that. But in the short term, it's not going to affect him in any way. And uh, what was your diagnosis there, Ry? Uh So I had a torn ligament on my anterior <laughs> something or other that went up into my fibula, Doc. You can probably describe that much better. But a bad high ankle sure, sprain with a torn ligament, yep. 
Yeah, so the so if you have the ATFL is the most classic, the anterior tail of fibular ligament is the most classic for a low ankle sprain, but the anterior inferior tib fibular ligament, the one that connects the two ligaments in the front of the tibia and fibula, and that's more classic for the high ankle sprain. So when you have those injured, uh, it does take a lot longer than your typical low ankle. Ah, oh, not what go. I wanted to hear. How many weeks you out? He said two to four. I'm walking on it, but feel better? Doesn't feel great. No. Okay. Well. <laughs> There's today's injury report brought to you by Cape Regional Health System, Penn Orthopedic, the best of both worlds with Dr. Kevin McHale for a healthier life. Call up for an appointment, 609-463-CAPE, or visit at caperegional.com slash orthopedics. And, of course, Dr. McHale, Eagles, Packers tonight. Enjoy the football. Hopefully a little better than last week.